All right, why don't we get started? Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Joseph Thomas Gear Memorial Sculpture Dedication Ceremony here in the College of Engineering neighborhood of the UC Berkeley campus. I'd like to extend a special welcome to Joseph Gear's son, Keith, who's behind me, and also his nephew, Ed Brock, who are joining us today for this uh, celebratory event. Um, I'm Sue J. King Liu, Dean of the College of Engineering. It's my pleasure to kick off this event today. Um, this is to recognize the life and legacy of Professor Gear, who earned his undergraduate and graduate degrees in mechanical engineering here at UC Berkeley in our College of Engineering, and he went on to become a professor of electrical engineering here. So today you'll hear from a few speakers who will give you more details um, about his remarkable life. So I don't want to steal their thunder, but I would like to take this opportunity to express deep appreciation to all of those who made this event possible today, especially uh, in the EECS department, Maggie Crowley. She's the coordinator of the Joseph Gear Memorial Project. Um, Professor Claire Tomlin, chair of the Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences Department, who really supported this project. Also our student leaders, uh, Bridget Ajeri, uh, who's the president of the Berkeley Engineering Science, Engineering and Science Student Association, and Christian White, president of the Black Graduate Engineering and Science um, Student Association. And finally, last but not least, our sculptor, Dana King, who uh, was commissioned to create a sculpture to honor <laughs> Joseph Gear. May we all be inspired to today to take to follow Professor Gear's outstanding example um, in scholarship and humanity. So thank you, and I'd like to hand it over to Dean Chase for additional remarks. Hi, uh, I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to speak here at the Joseph Thomas Gear Memorial Dedication Ceremony. Joseph Gear exemplifies the very best of Berkeley. 93 years after he set foot on this campus, it was 1930, he continues to inspire and teach us. He came here against all odds, the son of a single mother who supported her family as a domestic servant. He was the president of his fraternity he graduated in only three years with a degree in mechanical engineering, one of the first black students to do so. Unlike his white peers, he was not able to find a good job outside. So he came back, worked as a lab assistant, and completed his master's in 1940. He was hired by electrical engineering as a part-time lecturer in 1944. Many remember his extraordinary teaching, conveying science and mathematics basically to classrooms full of white students during a time of hostile segregation in this country. He made significant contributions before the civil rights movement when there were few black people holding positions of authority and power. He became a world authority on thermal and luminous radiation, co-invented and patented several instruments, and was way ahead of his time as a proponent of solar energy. Joseph Gear became the first tenured black professor in the UC system when he was hired as an associate professor in electrical engineering in 1952. Yes. <laughs> yes. He moved to UCLA to pursue solar energy research shortly before his untimely death in 1961. Joseph Gear's many accomplishments disappeared from the Berkeley record about 20 years ago, possibly because his greatest contributions happened at a time when our society did not celebrate the contributions of black leaders. We are here today to recognize 
Joseph Gere and to make sure that the story of his life and his achievements is never forgotten. All students in EECS and indeed the campus at large will see this statue on a daily basis and will be inspired by the presence of Joseph Gear in our lives today. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. It's a real pleasure to get to this point in which we are today unveiling the statue of the person we're honoring today, Professor Joseph Thomas Gear. As you've heard already, Professor Gear was a graduate of UC Berkeley Mechanical Engineering in 1933. He was an expert in thermal radiation and instrumentation. You heard that he was promoted from lecturer to associate professor of electrical engineering in 1952. And as such, he was the first tenured black professor in the entire UC system. Professor Gear was an amazing lecturer and he was also an inventor. He, um, he participated in eight patents, six in which he was the primary, he was the lead in these inventions. Um, and starting from this um, area in which he was a, a specialist in 1948, he patented a heat flow meter, which measured heat losses in the walls of engineering structures. He started a company with ME professor Robert Dunkel, and together they produced five amazing inventions, several of which are still being used today. His specialty was in reflectometers, where you use measurements of reflection on surfaces to characterize the surface or the component's properties. He's known for the Gear Dunkel Total Hemispherical Radiometer, which measures heat balance and heat transfer, and the Gear Dunkel Black Body Reflectometer, which is used and continues to be used in the space program to characterize materials that would withstand the heat of the sun in space. I'd like to just say a few words about the process by which we got to this point today. Um, and you've already heard about Maggie Crowley's role. She's going to speak in a second. But in around 2018, Maggie, who was at that time, now she's retired, but she was the communications director for our department, EECS. And she rediscovered Professor Gear. She started to dig into his history. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot written about him, but what there was, she found. Um, and she wrote an article, which we published on our website in February 2019, called Reintroducing Joseph Thomas Gear. The chair of EECS at that time was Jeff Bokor, and he asked Maggie and started thinking about how we might honor Professor Gear further. And one of our faculty in the department, Professor Chen Ming Hu, provided a foundational gift so that we could consider making some artwork in honor of Professor Gear. That's when I came onto the scene because I became the chair of the department and we started a committee. And this committee has been wonderful to work with. I keep saying this is one of the most amazing things to do as chair. I'd like to thank Sheila Humphreys, Jelani Nelson, Matthew Santillan, and Jeff Bokor. For, for their initial work in this committee. And you'll hear from other members of the committee, um, in particular, our wonderful artist, Dana King, and, um, and Maggie herself, and two student members of the committee, Bridget and Christian, in a minute. Our first job was to find an artist. And we, we looked at, uh, we sort of thought, you know, we're engineers, what do we know about art? So we started looking and, and asking people, and all of the arrows pointed to Dana, literally. So we had a faculty member whose partner is an art professor. Um, we had faculty members actually who, members of the committee who actually do know things about art. Uh, we had Sheila Humphreys, whose brother is the art director in uh, the Louisville, Kentucky Museum of Art. 
And they all pointed us to local renowned artist, Dana King. So we asked her. And since that time, so many people have come up to me and said, how did you get Dana on board? And I just said, we asked her. And she said, yes. She's, um, Dana is Oakland based, as I've said. She's known for her depictions of African Americans in bronze. You might have seen her statue of William Byron Rumford down in, um, in Berkeley. She is uh, the creator of the Women of the Montgomery Bus Boycott statue. Um, and one of her most recent statues is of Huey Newton, who was the co-founder of the Black Panthers. Dana and her personality, enthusiasm, and what she has done is just going to be part of this campus forever. I'd also like to thank a number of other people. I'd like to thank our campus architect, Wendy Hillis, who a couple of years ago now, we walked around campus with Wendy, looking at all sorts of different spots where we might have this statue. And this was um, one of the spots. Actually, it was suggested by Shankar, who was the then director of the Blum Center. Why not put a statue here at the entrance to campus. Students, faculty are coming down this pathway to get into campus. It's one of our gateways in the heart of engineering and data science. Um, we went through a number of committees for approval and we are at this point today. It's a great honor to um, welcome you all, to thank um, Chen Ming for his gift and um, a number of faculty members and members of the public who've contributed uh, money to support this gift. It's been wonderful to see how much support, and I see many of you here today. Thank you very much for contributing funds to help us. I'd like to thank Matthew, Bennett, Josephine, and Jasmine for helping us with the fundraising, all of our uh, generous donors. And of course, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Gear's family, especially his son, Keith, who is with us today. Thank you very much. So I'm going to be duplicating some of what people said because I'm going chronologically, so it's, it's inevitable. And one of the things you've already heard is that I'm the retired communications coordinator for the EECS department. Uh, I, I am truly honored to be part of this effort to bring Joseph Gear back to the Berkeley community. I started working for the department in 1986, so I was utterly dumbfounded when in 2018 I stumbled upon Joseph Gear's online obituary. Everyone I spoke to was as surprised as I was. I found almost nothing about him online, and the Bancroft Library only had a small box containing three of his papers. No photograph, no mention of his career, no mention of his race. So I was beyond thrilled to find Professor Gear's personnel folder still sitting in a file drawer <laughs> in the back of the Quarry Hall basement. <laughs> And it contained the Holy Grail, a photograph, which allowed us to create the sculpture. Most of what I could piece together originated in this folder, but there's still so much we will never know about Professor Gear and his life and career. So you've already heard a few things already, but I'm going to repeat. He was Born in New Orleans in 1910, he lost his father, who was a railroad porter, when he was three months old. And his mother, Alice, moved the family, that would be Gear and his two sisters, to Oakland. Joe excelled in school and was known for his kindness. He was on the high school honor roll. He was a letterman in basketball. He managed the baseball team. He sang in a quartet. And he was in the 1920s version of an AV club. He graduated high school in 1928 and enrolled at Cal in 1930. Berkeley sociologist Robert Nisbet, who was here at the time, said, quote, I didn't know or know of a single American-born black student at Berkeley in the 30s. And if someone had proposed increasing minority enrollment, they would have been rejected at just about every hand, student and faculty, irrespective of political or social ideology or anything else." Unquote. Despite the challenges of belonging to a tiny marginalized minority at an elite white institution, 
Joseph Gearshind. He was a member of Eta Kappa Nu, the EE Honor Society, and he was elected president of the Berkeley chapter of the black fraternity Alpha Phi Alpha. He earned his BS in 33 and got a job as a design draftsman for the Alameda County Public School System. A key ally of Joseph Gear was EE professor Llewellyn Belcher, a Cal ME alum who studied heat transfer problems. Belcher encouraged Gear to return to Berkeley as his graduate student in 1937. There, Gear met Robert Dunkel, who would later become a professor of mechanical engineering and Gear's partner in both research and business. Gear married Catherine Catley in 1939, and they had two sons, Ronald and Keith. He earned his master's in 41, but stayed on to run the California Highway Patrol Illumination Lab, where he conducted studies into visibility under various driving conditions, as well as the visibility of license plates. Gear Dunkel Instruments was established in 43 to design, build, and sell their patented light measurement devices to labs around the world. He was hired by the E department as a halftime lecturer in 46 and spent the other half of his time in Quarry Hall supervising projects for the Office of Naval Research. He and Dunkel developed reputations as world authorities on thermal and luminous radiation. A couple of fun facts. First, Gear helped UC Davis agricultural engineer Frederick Brooks developed the field of bioclimatology by custom designing his thermal instrumentation. Second, Gear asked the EE advisors to recommend one of his classes an elective, as an elective to a broader range of students to spark their interest in the possibilities of solar power because, quote, this generation would be negligent in its duty to posterity if research in the utilization of solar energy were not quickly accelerated, unquote. This was in 1954. Professor Gear succeeded despite the ways he was professionally hindered by his race. He couldn't read papers at conferences taking place in certain parts of the country. He was only offered a fraction of the consulting opportunities that his colleagues had. He could not easily court corporate benefactors to support his research projects. He was, in the end, held responsible for the negative outcomes that resulted from racist refusals to collaborate with him or recognize his authority. At that time, only 1% of California's population was black, so many of his students had probably never interacted with an African American before, especially one in a position of power over them. In order to be able to effectively teach them, he would have had to win them over day after day, class after class, year in and year out for decades. He was renowned for his patience and gentle manner, which one colleague explained allowed him to provide an answer, quote, without producing uneasiness in the student, unquote. Professor Gear was finally promoted to a tenure position in 52, effectively paving the way for other African American faculty at Berkeley, like David Blackwell. He was promoted to full professor in 1958, and in 1959, when Robert Dunkel moved to Australia, Belter, his old mentor, who left Berkeley to found the College of Engineering at UCLA, invited Gear to take a position there so he could pursue his research into solar energy, something he couldn't do in the E department at Berkeley. He died just two years later in 1961 of complications from high blood pressure. He was 50 years old. In the paper, California's Racial History, published in 2000, the authors decry the way that most written histories of California are, quote, conspicuously devoid of any serious discussions of race, class, or the life and death struggles over affirmative action. The University of California system, on an institutional level, appears to pay little attention to the history of its own interaction with California's minority communities, unquote. In this context, it isn't surprising that the university lost track of Professor Gear. Yet Joseph Gere, so far ahead of his time in so many ways, deserves to reclaim his place in Berkeley's history. We owe his rediscovery to the efforts of the multitude of anonymous people who collectively left trails of breadcrumbs for me to follow. The researchers who pull on the threads in our cultural tapestry to reveal new pictures. The writers who document our stories. And the administrators who carefully collect, preserve, and distribute narratives so that the future will be better able to learn from the past. 
the people willing to swim against the political and social currents of their times to keep the door to the past open just a crack, just enough. My hope is that this statue will serve as a kind of wedge to keep the door to Berkeley's forgotten histories from ever fully closing again. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. My name is uh, Christian White. I am a six-year PhD candidate in civil and environmental engineering, and I am president of the Black Graduate Engineering and Science students. Um, we are so honored and humbled to be here today to, for the unveiling of the bus to commemorate uh, the achievements and the legacy of Professor Joseph Thomas Gear. I want to start off by thanking the Gear Committee organizers for all their hard work, especially our artist, Anna King, for lending her artistic vision to this project. Um, Deegis is a graduate student organization that aims to support and advocate for black grads. Um, and a lot of our students uh, end up going on to be faculty, uh, administrators, uh, CEOs, um, and a lot of times they end up being the first black people in those positions. Um, just as Professor Gear was the first in his position at his time. Um, but I like to tell people all the time that whenever we make those accomplishments, whenever we make those achievements, that we are standing on the shoulders of giants. And Professor Gear was one of those giants. He broke down so many at the time seemed insurmountable social and institutional barriers for black students and researchers and made it possible for students like me and Bridget to be here today. Um, Professor Gear was a pioneer in so many ways beyond his research, which in and of itself is and was world-class and deserves the recognition that it hasn't gotten. But more importantly for establishing a, a seat at the table for black, working class, and marginalized students. And even though we've come quite a long way and have had many, many more firsts since Professor Gear became the first black tenured professor at Berkeley in 1952, I would like to imagine that if he were here today, he would challenge us all to continue his legacy by deconstructing anti-black racism in academia, not just at Berkeley, but all academic institutions. Because the reality is, a lot of us are the only black students in our department, or in departments with one or no black faculty members, or in departments that are complicit with anti-black racism. And so while I am humbled and excited today to celebrate Professor Gear and his accomplishments, I think the best way for, his to for us to honor his legacy is to continue his work so that one day there are no more firsts, and so that all of our achievements are not lost to history like Professor Gears. So again, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you for celebrating Professor Gears' legacy. I'm humbled and I'm honored to be here to celebrate on behalf of Beegis. And yeah, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Bridget, our next speaker now. So. Oh, hi. Hello, everyone. My name is Bridget Ajari, and I'm a current undergrad senior in EECS, and I'm the current president of the Black Engineering and Science Student Association, or BESA, at UC Berkeley. I would like to thank the GEAR Committee organizers for including BESA in this memorial service and for inviting me to speak today. And I would also like to thank Dana King for the beautiful sculpture and for being with us today. Undergraduate students in BESA have worked really hard to increase the recruitment and retention rates of black students in STEM majors. We aim to inspire young black students to pursue higher degrees in STEM through our pre-collegiate initiatives, such as our STEM tutoring program at Berkeley High School and the on-campus interactive STEM workshops that we host for black K through 12 students. We have also raised hundreds of thousands of dollars to help current black students navigate college through initiatives such as our internal 
tutoring programs and our various professional development events, including our annual trip to the Nesby National Convention. And you know, this is a lot of work and doing this work while ourselves navigating the racist and exploitative institutional structures within higher education is even more difficult. And so for us to come together today and to celebrate a black man who in the mid 1900s, before the civil rights movement, completed engineering degrees and became a professor at a top predominantly white institution is a really big deal. <laughs> and this recognition means a lot to black students on this campus. And I would just like to thank and appreciate my peers for continuing Professor Gear's legacy of being change makers on the UC Berkeley campus. There is still a lot of work that needs to be done to reduce structural barriers to success in STEM majors for racial minority students. And these barriers become bigger when combined with intersectional identities such as gender and disability. If we want more black faculty in STEM like Professor Gear, then the undergraduate experience in STEM needs to change. And I hope that Professor Gear inspires everyone to make the campus a more diverse and inclusive space so that we can foster more black excellence. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dana King, and I am honored to be here because of what these young students endure and what they will succeed at and how they will stand in a space of importance and compassion and create a better world. And that's what this is about. I want to thank so many people. I am, I am the barrier between me and that sculpture you see. So please forgive me if I, um, if I will, um, if I will move on past the thank yous. The gear committee has been extraordinary. I got a letter from Claire Tomlin inviting me to um, come and speak to them about this because of the work that Maggie did. Thank goodness she looked in that drawer. Thank goodness she looked in that drawer. So the difference between that moment and this moment is that this honor is created in bronze and it's created in a material that will last for thousands of years. And that means this story, Professor, Professor Gear's story, will last as long as this bronze lasts and be told generation after generation. And the, and the students who descend those steps will be looking at his face and wondering, who is that? Let me go and look at that. What's that about? And I hope that every student that comes down those steps and every staff member and every professor and every person who enters this campus through those steps learns about Professor Gear. A sculpture can only tell you so much. I hope that it educates people and encourages them to dig deeper, to dig deeper into the history of Professor Gear and those who came before him and after him, and also to dig into their own history, to find out who their people are and, who, and what their people did to build this country. We've been here for 400 and some years, and the things that exist around us were built by our people. I... Thank you. 
I create black bodies in bronze because I want our history to be part of American history. There aren't many black sculptors. There are just a handful of us. And so I want to thank Eeks. I want to thank this department for, for hiring a black sculptor to create the history of a black engineer because sometimes it doesn't happen. We all have learned who Professor Gear was in the classroom and on campus. But he was also a man. He was a father, he was a husband, he was a brother, he was a grandson, he was a nephew. His line goes back to the beginning of our time in this country. So my job is to figure out what kind of man was he? And all I had was one photograph and the history that Maggie uh, pulled out of that drawer. And the history that she shared with me were the applications for his patents, drawings that were made by his hands that came from his head and his heart. He was a sculptor. He was an electrical engineer who did mechanical engineering in addition to other types of engineering, solar, heat. I don't know much about engineering, but I do know that he saw in 3D. My favorite my favorite thing that he created was a black body reflectometer. Come on now. <laughs> I am going to get a tattoo of that on my arm. And yes, NASA uses it, and yes, it has a scientific uh, value and importance, but it also says to me, see me. See my black body. See my mind. See my heart. See who I am, the black body reflectometer. Come on. <laughs> so we are at the intersection of art and education and science with this sculpture. I consider my work subversive. I take uh, uh, an art form that is predominantly used to elevate Euro, Eurocentric uh, individuals and ideas. And I use that to create black bodies in bronze. That's half of this sculpture. The other half of this sculpture is your world. This base that Professor Gear's bust will sit on forever is the first of its kind made by the Artworks Foundry here in Berkeley, California. And when I say the first of its kind, we actually didn't even know how we were going to create this after I uh, created the design of it. Until about, y'all didn't know this, but until about three months ago. <laughs> and it is a 3D print of his work. It's a mashup of his designs, of his calculations, of his drawings and it was 3D printed, and then a mold was made of it and, and poured in bronze. Four, uh, a week ago, one of the four panels exploded as we were making it. I don't consider that failure because this was a risk taken, no different than the risk that Professor Gear took when he designed his creations. So in, in, an, in, an, in an extremely fast moving heaven and earth amount of time, we were able to finish this yesterday yeah. and install it yesterday. <laughs> and I'm almost there. I want to say to the students, to the black engineering students, to indigenous students here on campus, 
to other students of color. You belong here. You have earned your right to be here. You deserve to be here for what you do, what you will do, who you are, and what you bring to this campus. You make this campus a better place. The Sufi poet Rumi said, Wherever you stand, be the soul of that place. And that's what I want to ask of all of you today. There's no more hiding. There's no more, there's no more othering. There's no more lack of belonging. Not here, not now, not anymore. We are one. And so with this, with this request, um, I'm asking you to love one another, to lift up one another, and to look past the superficial and look into each other's hearts. I know Professor Gear did that. He was the man who listened to his students. Whether they had an issue about engineering or about life, he was there for them. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here today for him. Thank you for coming. I'd like to thank, um, I want to acknowledge some people who are here, Terry and Thelma. Um, Terry and Thelma Harris from the Thelma Harris Art Gallery, my representatives, my friends who are here, Frederica, Ashley, Karen, Kevin. And I consider you all now family because I'm coming back. I'm coming back to visit Professor Gear, and I hope to see you here. Keith Gears uh, approval. <laughs>